I think most people think of proof of work blockchains, which was the original blockchain for and that relied on using uh, lots of machinery to solve complicated math problem. But I mean, that's I think the past with the new incentive systems and proof of stake blockchains, where if you do something wrong, you actually lose your stake. I mean, they're at least so far from what we've seen as secure and able to secure as big of an amount of funds as the, well, not quite yet, but I think they'll get there. They'll be securing a large honeypot of money and we'll find that just that incentive of losing your funds is enough to get people to arrive at a consensus properly. So that's obviously, you know, one side of the equation is, um, and then you just looking at optimizing blockchain from then on. So Solana, for example, um, is pretty hardware intensive. At PowerLedger, we have um, utilized Solana's code base, made a few improvements to make it less hardware intensive, where you just need a, a laptop with you know eight CPU and you can be a validator. So that's a, a laptop that many people might have already. So it's really not going to be using more energy than if you used some Google services. You had a Gmail or a Google Drive account, Google Photos, something like that. And then on the back of that, it's all, it comes down to tracing, well, what is the energy usage of each particular validator or miner on the blockchain? Are they uh, somewhere uh, in an area where greed electricity is already coming from renewable sources, or is it only 30% renewable, in which case they can always buy renewable energy certificates, or they can install solar battery systems? Um, I think that's the push, and, and just validating that the blockchain is using uh, the correct energy source, uh, the clean renewable energy source, there's going to be a place for, um, I think, to differentiate different coins. I've actually seen a like coin. Green Bitcoin, you mean? Like, how yeah. do you do Iris Energy? Yes.